A close call at a Little League game can sometimes lead to a violent dispute, not among the players, but by their parents. Here's Dr. James Dobson with Family Talk. Athletic events can be healthy for kids, but parents sometimes place too much emphasis on competition. How many times have you heard this phrase at a Little League game or a soccer match? Okay guys, if you do your best and win today, it's pizza for everybody. But what message is being sent to impressionable youngsters who do their best and still lose? Now there's nothing wrong with healthy competition and of course kids should be encouraged to participate in various physical activities. But when mom and dad vicariously live through their youngsters, hanging on every decision, rising and falling on every win and loss, they model poor sportsmanship at every turn. They're also revealing that they never satisfied their own competitive needs growing up, and now they're riding on the successes of their children. Well, heaven help the youngster if he or she should fail. The result is that physical and emotional benefits of participating in a sport can be outweighed by the damage done to the child's self-esteem and his outlook on life. That is too high a price to pay. Dr. James Dobson with Family Talk. Here's Dr. James Dobson with Family Talk. Parents want to offer their children every advantage, but a few disadvantages may not hurt either. Personal defeat, feelings of inferiority, or handicaps of one kind or another can either paralyze a person or drive them towards success and achievement. In fact, one famous study reviewed the home backgrounds of 400 highly successful people, people whose names you would recognize. Surprisingly, three quarters of them came from troubled, dysfunctional families and fully 25% had physical handicaps. Not everyone who goes through difficulty will react this positively, of course, but what set these individuals apart was their ability to compensate. Refusing to drown in a sea of inferiority, they said to themselves, I can achieve adequacy through success if I work at it. Apparently, the stresses they experienced gave them the motivation to rise above the limitations and hardships that they had experienced. Since we can't insulate our kids from adversity, the least we can do as parents is help them make the most of it. We can motivate and equip them to compensate by creating opportunities for them to seek out and develop their strengths and the time to do that is during those middle years of childhood before the storms of adolescence set in. Dr. James Dobson with Family Talk. If you're the frustrated parent of a very rebellious and difficult child, stay tuned. I think I can encourage you. Here's Dr. James Dobson with Family Talk. I know there are times when you feel like throwing in the towel, but if you choose to remain steady, you will someday look back on this difficult period of conflict and be thankful that you stayed the course, that you continued to do what was right for your child. This era will pass, and more quickly than you think. The present stresses will one day seem insignificant and remote. What will matter to you then will be the loving relationships that you built within your family, even when other parents ran away or buried themselves in work. Does it help to know that in a survey of 3,000 parents, fully 85% said that they had at least one strong-willed child who stressed them to the limit? You are not an exception or the butt of some kind of cruel cosmic joke. This is parenthood. This is human nature. Others have survived and you will too. Remember that you are not to blame for your child's inborn temperament, but he is in greater danger because of his inclination to keep testing the limits. That's why you have to establish your right to lead. Don't panic, stay on your child's team, even when it appears to be a losing team, and give the whole process time to work itself out. 
Dr. James Dobson with Family Talk. 